I love the atmosphere yesterday in Baltimore. Good. You could tell that the crowd was in it. And yeah. as, as I said, a lot of Blue Jay fans making the trip. That was a playoff type atmosphere for both, both those teams yesterday. Uh, no doubt, Roflo. And, and kind of jumping off that, Kevin Gosman spoke of when the Baltimore Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays are, are testing the likes of the Yankees and the Rays and the Red Sox. It's good for the entire AL East. And he kind of thought back to last time he had the Orioles uniform on in a big game against the Blue Jays. Wild card. That's right. Remember Zach Britton standing all alone yeah. on the mound. Yep. Eddie Encarnacion's taking a parrot for a stroll and Toronto Blue Jays are moving on. It had that similar buzz to it, right? Big, big time games. They're going to play each other a ton. But somebody who got off to a slow start this year, and I think we take for granted these guys just come in and they hit the ground running, one of them being Bo Bichette, kind of struggled. And John Schneider's had to move him around trying to find his honey hole in this lineup. He's hit everywhere, all the way down to the seven spot. That's swallowing your pride a little bit. But he has caught fire at the right time. And he talked about, we can get into the tape real quick. He talked about getting more aggressive at the plate has kind of led to his resurgence. So pause this real quick for me. Bring up his season splits because he's gotten on fire. He's 24 for his last 60, 10 extra base hits. But take a look at this. First 105 games, mix in some average defense, making, making some errors on the defensive side of the ball, and then hitting 260 with a 302 on base, a 416 slug playing like your average big league ball player according to weighted runs created plus okay last 27 games and that's kind of been Toronto are they going to get on fire because if they get in with Alec Manoa Kevin Gosman throwing the ball the way through it yesterday you take your chances with Barrios Jordan Romano back end if this lineup gets rolling man they're a scary team and he gets rolling last 27 games 321 bad and average, 370 on base. Look at the weighted runs created plus there. Park adjusted with the plus sign. 74% better than your average big leaguer. And he talked about maybe being a little too passive early, maybe getting inside himself and thinking a little bit too much. Well, he ambushed the heck out of the Baltimore Orioles yesterday. Let's get into these three home runs because he has a lot of moving parts. Run that back, 0-0 count. Baltimore takes a 1-0 lead in the top of the third right here. And watch this. This is a lot going on. We got a high leg kick. Ooh. We're setting the hip. We're almost turning our back to the pitcher right there. And he goes dead left field. And he hadn't hit lefties at all this entire season. Mm. Run that back because I don't know how he gets to that. Another ambush. Oh, oh, high heater, feeling good about himself. Oh. Gets on top of it and drives it out to right center. So when you're syncing up all these moving parts and it's on time and your head's not moving, and that's the big thing for me, check out his head right there. Run that back for me, that side angle. Let's get into this a second. There's a lot going on here. Get to the weight to the inside of the back knee with the leg kick. Give it to me. Pause. I mean, you're in your most powerful position for Bo Bichette right there. Would I love the bad head to be a little bit more at a 45 degree angle. I think it's tough. You're just creating one more section to have to go to. Buster Posey talked about that last year. He was a guy that started here and then lifted. And then what did he say? I'm just going to start right here and eliminate that move because the exploding stuff he's seeing on a nightly basis. Run this. Once that foot, pause. I mean, he gets, talk about getting your lower half and using the ground to create your power. And then it's just whip appeal, throwing his hands at the baseball, mm. getting on top. But what I love about him, we're going to show his third homer right here as well. Oh. That's a two iron and a 1-0 count. The one thing I notice about him, too, when he has count leverage, and what I mean by that, pause, when he's hitting 3-0, 3-1, 3-2, 2-1, 1-0, when he's in a power spot where he could take a chance and try and do some damage, he's got that high leg kick and everything going. But what I love about him is, and the numbers don't support he's been that great with two strikes, watch what he does with two strikes. I love somebody run it who has a two-strike approach. Run that back. Watch his foot. Where's the leg kick go? He eliminates moves. He just sets it right there. See the ball, use my hands. Three, two, 
against the Buccos right there. Big spot. This is earlier in the year against Nestor Cortez driving a double down the right field line. And we've looked at this. This is him and Count Leverage. Run it. High leg kick. I'm letting it go. I'm trying to get everything behind it. And then two strikes. I gave myself a chance. Now this one's for the team. And I'm going to set my foot down and just leave it there. And it gets me thinking back. Mikey Young used to do it better than anyone. That's where I learned two strike approach. You took your chance with one and no strikes right there to do some damage. And then this one's for the team. And the other thing, the reason I compare him to David Wright, run that back for me real quick. You're seeing a lot of guys, and pause this. There's a lot of guys getting into their back hip. There was kind of this video going viral on the internet, on Twitter, talking about Bobby Witt kind of almost setting that back hip before he starts his move. Nobody did it better than David Wright. He was a guy who really used his hips, almost set that hip, number five showing, and he does the same thing. So message sent by the Blue Jays. We've been waiting for them to break out all year. I think they're a scary team if they get into October. And you see his hard hit rate since August 6th. I mean, he's up there with Schwarbs. Ooh, Aaron Judge, Tommy Bo Fan. Bichette, right? Tommy Pham's been good. They go through stretches where they're really hot, so October is going to be interesting if they're in one of those grooves.